every second, minute, hour, bigger, better, stronger, power. Welcome to episode number four from chapter four, and this episode is going to deal with some of the basic community interactions that you're going to find in an ecosystem. And the first interaction you're going to find is competition. Now, there are limited resources. Resources include food, shelter, nesting sites, mates, etc. And this is going to lead to competition. Now, this competition for limited resources is the cornerstone of Thomas Malthus's philosophy on how um, human uh, populations can be kept in check but through disease, famine, and war. And Malthus's concept greatly influenced Charles Darwin on his survival of the fittest and natural selection concepts. And there's just not enough of these things to go around, so individuals of different species and individuals of the same species will be competing for these resources. Now, one way that... Um, Competition comes into play is through predation. And during predation, one species tries to capture and then eat the other organism. All right, these should be pretty obvious to you. you know, most people know these already, but I'm going to go over them again. Key vocab when it comes to predation. The predator is the hunter. The prey is the food that's going to get captured and then eaten. Now, predation is a key factor in evolution. Uh, think of this, cheetahs are fast because their prey is fast. And often we have a concept called co-evolution where two species are going to involve, evolve in response to each other. Um, the cheetahs and the Thompson's gazelles that they eat are perfect examples of this. Um, the gazelles have evolved to be pretty athletic and pretty fast. That gives them an opportunity to get away from the cheetahs. The cheetahs have evolved a way to be really fast and be able to handle the athleticism of the Thompson's gazelles to be able to capture and therefore eat them. All right, so predation is a key factor when it comes to evolution. All right, the third and final type of community interaction that we're going to cover in this uh, screencast is herbivory. Okay, <laughs> once you remember that herb refers to plants and vori means to eat, like carnivore, all right? Okay, so these are organisms. When herbivory comes into play, this is uh, animals eating plants for the most part, okay? So this is the coevolution that occurs when a herbivore and plants evolve in response to each other, all right? So think of this. We've got uh, grasses. They've evolved to grow from the bottom up to better survive being eaten, okay? So we have all these... Uh, uh, herbivores such as deer, uh, bison, wildebeest, zebras, etc., and they're going to be nibbling on the grass blades. Well, most plants grow at the tips. Well, if you're biting off the growth area, that plant's not going to repair themselves. So the grasses have this great evolutionary advantage where their growth area is down below at the base of the leaf where the herbivore is not going to eat. So after, once its leaves get bitten off, it can grow them back. Uh, we are quite familiar with this because we kind of mow our lawns uh, at least once a week during the growing season because they keep growing back up after we chop off the tops. All right, uh, Cactus, they've evolved spikes to help keep them from getting eaten. Uh, most organisms will avoid eating a cactus because of the spikes. Now, organisms who can eat a cactus have either learned how to pull off the spikes or they've learned how to use tools and whatnot to get around them. So once again, we have co-evolution on that one. Okay. All right. We're going to stop this episode right here. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on that flip side.